Thank you again for being here, and that was a tough act to follow after Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal, but we'll try because, you know, like Pavitra introduced, this artificial intelligence is the buzzword. It is impacting all sectors. I mean, who could think that you no longer, uh, I mean, banks have been evolving with emerging technology, right? But the last couple of years have been particularly exciting with generative AI and whatnot. We all think we're experts now, pretty much. But, you know, we'll, we'll leave it to the real ones. And so this distinguished panel, we hope, will answer what the innovations and digital solutions for an AI-dotted financial services future will look like. So all of you, thank you very much for being here. And Professor Arya Kumar, if I could start with you. Uh, you know, to start by laying out the context of where India stands as far as our artificial intelligence capabilities are concerned. We just heard, uh, you know, Mr. Sanyal talk about how this is India's decade and the decades to come, and we must make the most of this opportunity. So where do we currently stand, uh, whether it is talent, whether it is workforce, where does our advantage lie? Yeah, thank you so much. I think AI is going to play a very critical and vital role as the technology and its implications to the Indian economy are concerned. We've been talking about becoming third leading economy soon in another three years or so. And technology, technology, and technology. Today we say mobile technology, mobile people, mobile money, mobile banking. And in all this, the core part would remain technology. We are moving fast. When I look at the Indian economy today, as far as the skills are concerned, school level students are talking of AI. The college level, they are in a big verge in terms of AI-driven startups coming up. Ernest and Young, as well as the other major reports which have come on a skill set as far as India is concerned, the AI factor as far as acceptance is concerned, we are moving very fast. As far as the research and academia is concerned, we are the fifth largest as AI is concerned. We need to put in a lot of, I will say, further effort. Although Niti Aayog has come out with the research leading to almost 10,000 crores of investment in AI-driven technologies, but still, on a research front, I would say we spend almost just 0.7% of GDP, which has to go up if we really would like to make use of this opportunity at this point of time. So I'm sure that we are ready for moving ahead very fast. Skill set is ready with us. The deep technology, we need to do much more than what we have been doing today. And the research driven investment, be it the banks, be it the industry, be it the research institutions, be it the academia, all have to join hands. And therein, the major push in terms of a research, which is a purposive research, which is a research which is giving a direct impact on a GDP has to happen. No. Thank you. No doubt. And, you know, you spoke of collaboration as well, and you spoke about the need to build that skill force. Let me ask the other academic mind on the panel here. Uh, you know, when you think of a country like India with its diverse opportunities and challenges, both for a 1.4 billion strong population, uh, what to your mind is the best possible integration of artificial intelligence in the field of finance? Because for a vast segment of the population, even to this day, Financial inclusion, real financial inclusion, remains a challenge. So what could artificial intelligence do to change the game? So uh, artificial intelligence can do a lot of things, but whether it will be done in India in next decade, uh, I'm a bit pessimistic. Technologies-wise, we have done huge, but AI and technology are two different things in a way. Uh, so technology where we have done UPI is like, you know, fabulous job. We are the leader in the uh, world. But AI needs uh, data and algorithm coming together. And, and this is where we are, we are lacking. And, and the way that our structure is right now, it will lack uh, uh, probably in a big way. Um, but there is a lot of scope. So already UPI, if you can see, it's increasing uh, the credit growth, even the financial inclusion, the fintech companies the payment uh, revenue-based financing is increasing a lot. So it's getting there, and, and it will continue to do so. But whether we'll have an exponential push uh, through AI, um, I'm not so sure. But what, you, what to your mind, sure, we'll take some time getting there, but what is the best possible integration of AI into the world of financial services today that could unlock opportunities for a country like India? So the major obstacle we have is uh, uh, 
two or three. One is if you look at the US market, the best brands of AI are is actually in the industry. And industry creates the major innovation mainly because I can create an algorithm, but I don't have enough data to train. That's where Google, Facebook, Amazon get the lead. India is still enormously lagging with the collaboration of industry and academia. Uh, so for example, if I approach a bank today, uh, you know, like Chase Bank has done in the in, uh, in US, Wells Fargo has done. What they have done, they have basically anonymized the entire data for the last 20 years. And any researcher can come in their server and test their algorithm and, you know, uh, they can do a lot of things. So this kind of environment, unless this comes and, and you know, uh, I can create an algorithm. Does it work? I don't know. And that's where the major problem is. At the same time, the financial sector sits some tons of data. And for them, because they are bogged down in so many day-to-day -day stuff, for them to innovate is very tough. So the marriage somewhere has to happen. Well, uh, let me ask the gentleman sitting next to you from State Bank of India, is it that tough really, uh, you know, to integrate technology into banking? What has State Bank of India been doing in the last couple of years when this generative AI has come about? You know, when we think of generative AI, we immediately think chatbots. Uh, you know, but the application surely is much beyond that. No, let me first say that I think I don't completely agree with uh, Professor Ghosh here because Yes, algorithms are easy to develop, and any data scientist can do that. Training the models requires data, like he said, but the data is now available in abundance, largely for the fact that a lot of data gets generated much more than what we've generated in the preceding all the years that you know, data has been generated. So there is enough and more data. We just have to find a way of making use of that data. So in SPI, the way we are looking at generative AI is uh, you know, first of all, all these large language models on which generative AI is based or, or vice versa, whichever way you look at it, most of them are offshore. They are not in India. Now we are seeing an emergence of LLMs in India. Uh, you know, you, you interviewed Bhavish also the day he announced, uh, you know, this well, Those LLM are at very early stages, yes. Very early but, stages, yeah. but so I do agree. I do agree with uh, Professor Arya Kumar when he says that, you know, deep tech has been missing in India. So we have really lacked a lot of research and uh, deep tech related work. In SPI, what we started to do was analytics. Yes, we set up uh, quite a few years ago. Hmm. The data science practice evolved to substituting and replacing the statistical models which were developed by statisticians by AI models which are developed by data scientists because we don't have any dearth of data. So we have enough and more data to train our models to make them work and we also managed to come up with a framework to make sure that it works within the guardrails of being a responsible as far as the AI is concerned, yeah. also making sure that it is ethical, it is inclusive, it doesn't have biases, it doesn't have this whole notion of concept drift, you know, that you, it intends to do something, but over time, you know, the concept starts drifting and it starts producing another uh, set of outcomes like what the deputy governor and even the governor in the IBA conference highlighted that don't excessively depend on algorithmic lending. So we keep calibrating and recalibrating. Now, now the way we are looking at uh, generative AI is that one, of course, from the point of view of uh, cybersecurity, which I'm sure we probably might be discussing here, but because these models are all offshore, mm -hmm. we don't have too much of a source code in India, the best thing that anybody can do today is to only run some use cases, led POCs. Mm -hmm. But in the medium term, at least our aspiration is, one, for the fact that we've invested early on into analytics, data science, and AI. Yeah. And in fact, one of our models already has a patent, you know, an AI model for fraud detection. And we have multiple such models, you know, which are performing very well. One of our aspirations is to actually develop our own large language model, which is specific to banking domain. Why depend on ChatGPT? Why depend on somebody else? So is else's SBI development? building their own SBI GPT? We aspire GPT? to do that. We aspire to do that. We aspire to, like Bloomberg, we, GPT you are familiar with. It is a domain-specific GPT. Hmm. There is another, you know, set of GPTs which are domain-specific. So why should we just worry too much about, you know, ChatGPT writing poems and essays and all of that? We could, with our, our set of data, I'm sure we can develop our own large language models. And to that extent, what we did recently, we have partnered with IIT Bombay. We have set up a center for data science and analytics hmm. where the primary charter for us is to research, train, and also work on very specific use cases around generative AI, but eventually build the skills to write and develop 
our own LLMs. Well, this will come. I'm not saying that this is a plan, you know, which is already there, but this is an aspiration that we do have <coughs> that eventually we should insource. And one of the risks with AI that we very clearly see, and that is a problem that we saw long back in SBI, is that all of AI talent is insourced. We don't outsource anything because you don't want anything to go wrong with your data security controls, privacy, and of course, the new norms that we are seeing now. If you're building that into the curriculum already, uh, you know, governance, ethics, ethical, responsible use of AI when you're teaching it to your students, uh, you know, what is the importance that is being assigned to it at that level? See, I would say as so the academic uh, domain is concerned, ethics have to get integrated in all aspects, AI, not only AI. Because uh, anybody cannot go in terms of a marathon, not only is ethical. So ethics has to become part and parcel. And uh, today when we talk about Howard talking about the Gita and management, there is some reason for that. Uh, that ethics have to get integrated everywhere. But more so, you see in a technology domain, if we don't have an ethics, then as uh, Mr. Ghosh was rightly saying, governance becomes very d difficult to look at. Uh, suppose there is a b b selfless uh, driver-driven car and it meets an accident. Suppose tomorrow a major fraud happens in a banking industry. Hmm. Whom to hell responsible? Unless we have a governance in a place in terms of uh, checks and balances, uh, we were talking about uh, collaborating with the partners. So how much emphasis do you lay on that aspect of the use of artificial intelligence in curriculums, in colleges, to prepare the workforce for the skill gap that we have in AI? Uh, we, we in our institution, which Pilani is concerned, let me tell you, some of the courses which have become very popular today are from humanities and psychology. Hmm. Uh, cognitive sciences and the basics on the ethics. Gita and management is the one course which has become very popular, around 500 students are taking. Hmm. And uh, surprisingly, uh, last semester I was looking at the data, uh, one of the Christian girl students topped that particular course. Hmm. So these are something which are uh, very miraculous things which are happening, that the students themselves taking greater interest in terms of uh, integrating the computer ability with the finance, with the humanities. The another great thing which have been happening in a bit Pilani is because of minor programs today, every computer science student is taking a finance as a minor and then he does a CFA because they look at the opportunities in a financial sector to be far more lucrative with a technology background. Yeah. And then if they do some ethics courses and ethics and AI as a specialized course, hmm. I'm sure he's preparing a well-rounded professional to play a vital role in a industry. Well, you know, speaking of skills, Aishwarya, when you go out to recruit today, um, and, and given that artificial intelligence is so widely being used, including generative AI, a relatively newer concept, do you find the requisite skills that you're looking for in the market, or do you often come back disappointed at the lack of skills, uh, you know, that you're looking for? Oh, you'd be amazed, Ritu, if I tell, 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 tell you about my APM interviews, you know, they'll be like, I'll answer this question, you know, once I'm done, I'll share a note with you. It'll be a beautifully written note till you realize that this is a chat GPT submission. These kids know how to hack things as well, which is where somewhere what he so told they have about the ethics resonates. Uh, yeah, they do have skills. Let's not doubt this generation. And they are skilled enough to manipulate the AI as well as my worry. So the AI might have to be the watchdog as well at some point of time, you know. My 15-year-old son says he goes to chat GPT to ask for ideas, you know. That's the generation we are bringing up. So ethics needs to be ingrained in the user as well as the AI is how I look at it. Well, yeah, you know, on, on a more serious note, of course, uh, uh, none of these questions were prepared by Chad GPT. <laughs> but uh, let, me, let me ask you, Professor Ghosh, since, uh, you know, every time we talk about artificial intelligence, we're talking about skills and workforce, there's always that immediate fear that comes in the mind of people, and for valid reason, that it'll threaten jobs. We have one of the largest payment companies in the country that has recently announced that there's been a slight reduction in the workforce because they were able to see the transformative power of artificial intelligence in the use of financial services. How real is that threat and how large is the skill gap that is uh, needed to be filled to ensure that, you know, jobs are created faster than jobs are lost? So the 
<clears throat> total number of jobs may not reduce drastically. It's a reallocation, the way I see it. Uh, so there are certain kind of jobs will go because we are in the midst of huge amount of automation. Uh, but that, that will create some uh, new kind of job. The major problem is not that. The major problem is uh, we in the academic institution are struggling what to skill the new. Uh, we, we still don't know what to skill, to be honest, because of two things. One, uh, so India did IT. They captured very well because IT is a unidirectional skill set. AI is a multidisciplinary skill set, and Indian academic institutions are notoriously bad in collaboration. Uh, you know, to be, to be very honest, I am Bangalore, IIC doesn't collaborate, right? Uh, so, so that creates a major problem because today, if you look at the top technology firm, uh, they hire as many engineers as economists or as historians, right? Uh, so we need that multidisciplinary skill set, so that is one. Uh, second is because our academic institutions are dominantly teaching-based institutions, we are a user. So somebody need to do the research and then I will bring it to the classroom. And I am not doing that. The US is doing that. China is doing that. And that's creating the major problem in skilling. I'm waiting for the next material to come for me to, because <clears throat> if you look at IIT, IIM, we are majorly teaching institute, not research institute at all. And that creates a problem that what do I skill? If I don't do research on this topic, I have nothing new to skill my students unless somebody else created the material and I can communicate much faster. That's the problem. Like in my class, what happens is when I teach machine learning, a lot of the time students are sleeping. And I don't blame them because whatever I'm saying, they are already know that from uh, you know, Coursera or something, they already know. So unless I'm you know, throwing something new to, to, for them, it's very hard to glue them in the class. So skilling is becoming a tough choice for us. And the third problem is we also don't know what is coming tomorrow because technology is changing so fast that I'm training something now and next year it's getting obsolete. So I think that today's youth, particularly who are in the age group of not necessarily the youth, around 35, 40 age, where the technology firm started to ask whether I need this guy or not, uh, a constant upskilling is there, and that constant upskilling is not five years. It's probably every six, eight months you have to go and reskill because so many new things are coming, and uh, this, is a, this is a challenge for both for the students as well as for us. No doubt. I mean, the pace of technology is a challenge for stakeholders, for academia, for industry, for the regulator. Um, Let me just add to Professor Ghosh uh, idea: this reskilling, learning, relearning. That's our main, main domain today. Uh, I would like to especially highlight, we introduced a work integrated learning programs in a Bits Pilani in 1989. You'll be surprised to know, today we have 45,000 students, working professionals, while being in the job, pursuing higher degrees. These are the ME programs, they are BS programs, and most of the uh, most, of, most popular programs are data science, AI, AI applications, these are most common programs which most of the industries are demanding today. Hmm. So I, I'm fully with Professor Ghosh in terms of a reskilling, relearning has to be a continuous process. Yeah. Knowledge is becoming obsolete at a very fast pace. Yeah. And unless until we keep doing that with our each employee, and that's a major challenge to the banks today too. When yeah. you're looking at the technology induction, how fast we can reskill our own employees hmm. has to be the greatest, greatest challenge. Well, uh, l let me complete this jobs and skilling debate with you, Mr. Chuk. Uh, um, as State Bank of India, as one of the largest employers in the country, uh, just tell us how artificial intelligence has impacted, uh, you know, your employee workforce uh, because of costs and efficiency, uh, you know, improving. Um, I'm wondering if you're going to hire at the same pace, whether you're going to go to an IM or a Bits Pilani to hire, or are you looking elsewhere to hire? Are you seeing the requisite skills? See, uh, data scientists, we do hire hmm. from the market. Because do, we, do you go we, to IIM Bangalore? He says, uh, th you know, the students already know everything. Yeah, uh, he, he has to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> History, historically. <laughs> <laughs> Not in but, future. But I think the yeah. way we are looking at AI in the bank is that it still has a lot of headroom available for efficiency unlocks. Hmm. And that will continue to happen. Business models are obviously also transforming within the bank and in the industry. And as that change takes place, AI is 
going to go through this whole phase of being an assistive technology, which will improve the efficiency and unlock a lot of productivity gains, to being an augmented uh, technology where it will start supplementing the effort of, let's say, coders or you know, product managers, customer service agents. Sure. That can anyway yeah. come even as assisted. And eventually, and we are in no hurry to get there, that some tasks will get performed autonomously also. Mm. So rather than jumping straight into an autonomous role for AI, we want to go through this whole journey and learn also along the way well, and keep releasing those unlocks. You know, it's, it's difficult to predict, but currently, uh, in the last couple of years, what has been the impact of uh, the wider adoption of technology on your oh, hiring huge. pattern? Oh, huge. I mean, I'm not talking about our headcount, I think, is by and large, you know, consistent for the last uh, few years. And we do obviously, you know, have the intake of our probationary officers every year, but also because we have a, a superannuation card, you know, every year. But more importantly, I think what we've been able to do is that a whole lot of business benefits, risk management side benefits, early fraud detection, uh, reallocation of resources. For example, one of our models which runs the footfall uh, prediction or footfall analysis in the branches and then does the allocation of staffing which is you know quite standard even in call centers we've been able to very productively and usefully deploy that to be able to unlock those efficiencies but i think the largest gains for us have been on the on the underwriting side you know towards risk management and on the business side but uh, no change in your hiring pattern because of these yeah so we are hiring more and more data scientists so, now no the uh, hiring is not coming down because of this efficiency no, no, no. that you're no. seeing see the All bank right. is in we are in a growing economy and i think the bank has been doing very well and growing so i don't think there's any reason for us to saturate at that level and say that we don't need to hire I see. People. Okay, all right. Uh, I think everybody has been very well educated by this panel. So thank you very much, all of you, for being a wonderful audience. Dr. Chaudhary, Mr. K Professor Kumar, Ishwarya, Professor Ghosh, Mr. Chuk. Thank you all for your time here. Thank you. Thanks very much.